Howdy freeze dryers, welcome back to the Live Life Simple Kitchen. I've been going back through my old videos because I've been uploading things to the new cookbook and kind of researching things and I've noticed a few things. One, uh, I really sucked at doing videos when I first started doing this and we've come a long way since that uh, five years ago now. Uh, two, we really need to reboot some of those old videos because so much has changed with the freeze dryer. They've gotten way more efficient. Uh, things have just gotten a lot better and I just really want to do a better job of, uh, of showing how to do things. And three, I have a lot of videos from back before I was just doing primarily freeze drying that I never really utilized for freeze drying and today's recipe is going to be just that. We're going to do some wild apple applesauce coming up. Late summer into the fall is my favorite time of the year. Everything starts cooling off, but you can still be outdoors and not get just blasted by sun. But you also have lots and lots. This is when the abundance comes from gardens and uh, from if you have trees with apples or pears or plums or whatever it is. And today we're gonna use some wild yellow delicious apples. We're gonna throw them in the Instant Pot. We're gonna make some wild applesauce with some cinnamon. It's gonna be delicious, it's super fast. And to get started, we need about four to five pounds of apples or wild apples. And I'm not exactly sure how far this is gonna get us onto a medium tray, but we're gonna find out. Uh, there's two different ways that we need to process these apples. You can either quarter them or you can run them through one of these handy dandy machines if you've ever seen one of these. Uh, they're, they're real slick for doing lots of apples. The apples I'm doing today are pretty small so I think it's probably almost faster just for me to quarter them. Um, but if you want to check one of these out, I'll put a link for one of these and I, I've used it in one of my old videos too. You can go check that out. I'll put a link for that as well. First thing you want to do with your apples, separate them out if they have holes or bugs or whatever, get rid of them. Then we're gonna to wanna to clean them off. We'll just rinse them real quick. Then you're going to want to get a pot. You can go directly into the Instant Pot pot. That's what I'm gonna to do today. And then add two cups of water to this pot. Uh, that should get you by. You might need to add a little bit more water uh, after the fact, but this, this will at least get your, your apples soft enough that you can start making the applesauce. So once your apples are quartered, just throw them into the Instant Pot. We're looking for about four to five pounds worth of apples. So skin or no skin, that's your next choice. I like to leave the skins on. There's a whole lot of fiber and good other nutrition in the skin. If you have a good blender or food processor, uh, you can completely eliminate the skins. It blends into the actual applesauce and you really, you can never even tell the difference. And I absolutely love doing stuff. This is like some of my favorite freeze drying stuff to do because this is pretty much the pinnacle of organic to me. This is straight off of a tree that doesn't get watered. It just gets watered by the rain. No pesticides, none of that junk that goes on to your store-bought stuff. And then you can, you can actually preserve it for lots and lots of years. Then we're gonna add those four to five pounds of apples to our Instant Pot pot with a tablespoon of cinnamon. And you can also add a little bit of sweetener at this time. Some apples don't need any sweetener at all. These I would imagine will, they're a little bit sour. So I would probably use some stevia or artificial sweetener if you can, uh, just to make sure that it's not going to bubble up and get crazy like sometimes sugar does. I'll leave that up to you. And we're gonna bring this over to the Instant Pot. We're gonna set the Instant Pot for six minutes. Make sure this is in the seal position and also don't forget to add that two cups of water or you will have some burned apples. When that's all done, we're just gonna release the pressure. And then these apples should be nice and tender. And what you get is some beautifully steamed apples. And you're gonna wanna take all of those and put them into a Vitamix, a blender, food processor, immersion blender, something that can take all of this and just kind of pulverize it into a sauce. 
like applesauce. I like cutting mine in about half and doing the sauce that way. That way I can kind of adjust the sweetness and the cinnamon amount uh, while I'm going and then add it to the tray. Then I do the second part. This one was pretty sour so I did add a little bit more cinnamon and I also added some more sweetener, a couple tablespoons. I would add probably a tablespoon at a time for the sweetener because it can get real sweet real quick. <laughs> The nice thing about freeze drying this recipe is that you can change the consistency uh, once you rehydrate because even if it's a little watery right now or a little too thick, you can just change that once you, once you go to rehydrate. That recipe made one tray already and we have about half a container left. I'm gonna pop some dividers in the 40 portion because I want portions and I also want to see if we can make some uh, applesauce square bite things. Time to put them in the deep freeze. These are gonna go in the deep freeze, then we'll freeze dry. All right, we have our applesauce, homemade applesauce ready. So make sure you check out the new freeze drying cookbook. It's just freezedryingcookbook.com. And also take a minute to subscribe if you have not already to our channel, Retired at 40, Live Life Simple. We do primarily freeze drying on this channel. You might as well click the bell. That will give you a, a notification sent every time we release a new video for us. That's Sundays at 8 a.m. And if you found our videos helpful, make sure you let us know by giving us a thumbs up. And if you have any questions about freeze drying, make sure you take a minute to check out our social media groups. We have a Facebook group, a MeWe group. It's Retired at 40's freeze drying group. Lots of knowledgeable folks on there and lots of helpful information. If you cannot find what you're looking for, make sure you try and look on this magnifying glass on this site. That's a search function. You can search topics, old threads, uh, members, really just anything you can imagine on there. We also do giveaways on there almost weekly. So if you want to sign up to get some cool free stuff, make sure you do that. And if you're ready to purchase one of these things, please consider using our affiliate link just to let Harvest Right know that we sent you there and gave you that information. They send us a small commission. We use those commissions for giveaways in the groups. We uh, keep YouTube content coming your way. And it also helps us develop new products for freezedryingsupplies.com. We are trying to streamline the freeze drying process, make it as easy and painless as possible. We have lids for the trays, we have dividers for the trays, pre-cut parchment, tray stackers, mylar bags, oxygen absorbers, silicone uh, tray liners, lots of helpful stuff to make your freeze drying process that much easier. And in a few short moments, we will see what our portioned wild homemade applesauce looks like. The applesauce took a while, about 37 hours. Also 25.8 kilowatt hours. And I think on something like this, it's very important to run your hand along the bottom of the tray. And you wanna make sure that these trays are warm. If there is any cold at all, or if it's not warm, I would stick them back in. I wouldn't risk it. Because something like applesauce holds so much moisture that it's very easy for it to to hold an extra you know, little bit of, of moisture and you wouldn't know it. And I also think it's important to use the infrared thermometer because this is pretty thick stuff and it's, it can fool you. You know, there might be a little cold frozen spot still in the center and we look good. Most of this is in the 90s and even in the hundreds. And I think the trickiest part about our applesauce is getting it out of the tray. Sometimes it helps to try and twist the trays kind of like you did the uh, the old school ice cube trays. That'll kind of break it loose. It is, it is coming out in one whole piece, so hopefully we can get those to uh, break free from the dividers. So I would strongly suggest that you use parchment paper if you're doing wild applesauce or applesauce because it will stick to the bottom of the stainless steel pan. Uh, I, I've done this en enough times that it, it makes a mess and you'll end up just kind of powdering and you'll have a big pile of powder. Half of it will be left on the tray still and just kind of go to waste. The parchment peels off really nice and easy and you can either get the pre-cut parchment from us or make your own. Either way, I would not recommend doing it without parchment paper. Well, the dividers worked and the trick to this is once you get one side, you can, you can actually bend this and pop the next one out. And then you can also try and move the mold a little bit and twist it the same way we twisted the tray, just like an old ice cube tray, and then those cubes will pop out and not stick to the divider. I'm just gonna do my sample applesauce in a ball jar. 
and now let's go do our taste test. I've also been wanting to try something that a YouTube subscriber suggested. They said if you turn your heaters on and then put a fan on, it will actually circulate the air and defrost your machine way faster. I don't know if it'll be five minutes, 10 minutes, but uh, it will defrost your machine way faster. So I'm gonna give that a try. All right, well, it has been uh, several days since I freeze dried. I have everything packaged and I wanted to show you how cool these squares end up after you vacuum seal them. This to me is priceless. If you've been freeze drying for a while, food storage is a pain and it adds up so fast that you run out of space really quick. This right here to me, you can easily double your food storage space because you're, you're taking all the volume out of the bag. And for our sample, I just vacuum sealed a ball jar. And what I would really like to do is get a couple of weights on these applesauce cubes to see how consistent they are. I really want to try and start getting better rehydration methods uh, more nailed down in my videos. We'll add them to the cookbook as well. I think that's going to be really beneficial. Tricky thing about this applesauce is it is so light that it almost doesn't register on the scale. So I, I did two of these 40 portion squares and did six, it's about six grams for two of those squares. So we're gonna add some water in very slowly, uh, probably a teaspoon at a time, maybe a tablespoon at a time until we get that rehydration method nailed. And I think I've nailed it three tablespoons per six ounces. So again, I used two of those cubes for applesauce. I added three tablespoons to two cubes or six ounces. And I think this is just about perfect. Uh, on a side note, if you did want to add a little bit less water, you could have kind of an apple butter texture. So you, that would be really good for spreading on toast and things like that. I do think also, I have some freeze dried strawberries from way back in March of 21, not that long ago, but I was gonna open these up and top them on the applesauce because I think that would be a really good treat also. I also think that these would be good if they were just powdered. Freeze dried fruit powders and even vegetable powders are probably a little underutilized in freeze drying and they make a great topper and add a whole lot of flavor to just different things that you normally wouldn't think about. And I think not only strawberries, but blueberries or bananas or all kinds of different stuff would be awesome with this applesauce. So just so I'm not cheating, I'll do the applesauce by itself first. And there's just no taste like wild apples in an applesauce. It tastes so much better than uh, a normal applesauce. It rehydrated perfect and I love being able to change the, uh, the texture, the consistency with more or less water. This is a perfect example of that. Let's try some strawberries on here as well. That's awesome. Well, I think that's it for today. Wild applesauce is awesome. Another success, another freeze drying cookbook recipe. In the meantime, this is Retired at 40. Remember to live life simple. Catch you next week.